Hello and welcome back to Condo Online. My name is Rosie, as you might already know from the other day. And I'm here with Big Boy. Yeah, what's happening? Uh, well, thank you for coming. Nice one. Well, so, let's see. Tell me about the song that you're doing with Big Condo Records for the Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, it's called Big Condo Mental Health. I've done four, four bars. Four bars, with. yeah. Yeah, it should be a big song. Yeah? yeah. You excited for yeah. it to come out? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear your bars. Mm. And um, what, if, what, what are you hoping to get out of it? What are you hoping, what, what do you want the outcome to be of this song? To raise awareness or to, yeah, to let it. people know that there's someone there for them? Yeah, you know? both of them. Um, I hope it just does what it, what it should do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, cool. Raise awareness for the people who think there's no one there for them. That's good. Mm. It's a good cause, really, when you think about it. Because the I was talking to a, a lovely artist called Livy Livy Kay the other day, yeah. and she was saying about how obviously in this day and age and stuff, te like technology has a big, like it's a big part of everyone's life. So if you can get that message out there to people that there's somebody there for them through yeah. music and technology and stuff. And even doing this now, there's people, there's going to be someone watching going, well, at least I'm on you. Yeah. It's good, it's a good feeling. Yeah, definitely. Um, can you tell me about anything, any work that you've got coming up, any music, um, anything exciting? I've got a single I've produced for Cash Pound Notes called Money. Um, that should be dropping soon, you've got a tour coming, so that should be big. A uh, tour in like the UK? In the UK. Yeah, or cool. In the UK, yeah. Nice. And um, I've just recorded two songs with Big Condo mm -hmm. called So Close and See Me Do It. What, about, what happened with those? How did you? How did you come up with those? What's the influence behind those songs? Talk, um, me, through, talk me through the first one. So close, did you say? So close, that's yeah. about um, me partners just had twins. Yeah. Um, I was going to gonna mention that actually, yeah. I've done my research. Yeah, a week old today. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, nice one. And that's about them. Mm -hmm. The other ones are... Um, it's just about things I do, like see me doing it. So, okay. yeah, it's sounding good, like. So. That's right. When they out? Did you say? There's no date yet, mm. but hopefully start the next year. That's right. Yeah. New year, new start. Yeah, yeah. Nice. What else? Um, what about? Can you tell me about the group that you were in? Suspect and Big Boy. Suspecting people, yeah, I'm still in it. You're still in it? Yeah, we still work and um, I took a break, <laughs> obviously, because with the trends of Yeah, the of course, of course. Um, yeah, we should have stuff coming out at the start of next year, too. Yeah. He's got some solo stuff coming before then. Um, yeah. Well, Beat Boy's not just a rapper, he's actually a producer as well. So can you tell me about the production in that you're involved in and what you've done yeah, and stuff? Um, I started off with Yellow Boy from Miami. Yeah. Um, I done the single Millions Way for his golden line called Millions Way. Yeah. That went quite big. Oh, that's amazing, that. Yeah, nice one. And you've worked with um, Bugsy. Bugsy Malone. I've done a show with Bugsy yeah. Malone. Yeah. yeah, you've done a show with Bugsy yeah. Malone. That's still pretty big now. Yeah. I love Bugsy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's sick, isn't um, it? one six I've, one stand up. Yeah. <laughs> I've, done, I've worked with um, Young Juice from Miami. I've done yeah. uh, three songs on his album, I Still Human, too. Um, I've produced for like Wiley and Cash Pound Notes. Wiley, the godfather of Graham. Yeah. He's brilliant, Wiley. Yeah, he's sick, isn't he? Have you seen... Wiley's fuming with Drake, have you seen that? He's just going mad at Drake for being a culture vulture. It's all over and scum. Yeah. He's so funny. Like, yeah. he does... He's just... The videos he's putting online, he's like... He's going... Um, he's just mocking Drake, like, when he did that 
um, yeah, the behind bars when Jay tried to do yeah, the behind bars, yeah. he's just going yeah. R's and B's and O's, aren't yeah. it? Just, and you've seen the ones and... with um, Ed Sheeran? Yeah. He's got his mask on that. Walking around? Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's, it's terrible, funny. that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know this this song that you're doing for, with Big Condom on that? It's for Mental Health Awareness Week, obviously. Yeah. And I think we should have a little chat about that. Yeah. Because, obviously, it's Mental Health Awareness Week. <laughs> and that's basically what we're talking about today. Yeah. So, with, like, what have you been through that makes, like, that you think you could help other people with their mental health and their problems? Um, when I was about 16, 17, I suffered bad with um, depression. Mm -hmm. Um, got diagnosed with PTSD. And at the time, you think that you can't, there's no way out. But there's a way out. You think there's no one to talk to. Mm. And while you're going through it, you feel like there's no one to talk to, but you don't want to speak to anyone. Yeah, sometimes like you just want to keep it inside. Yeah, you just hold everything inside, and there's always someone to talk to. It is whether it's yeah. your, your mum, your dad, your friends, somebody outside of your social group, mm. someone like your friends, mum, even. Yeah. Like, if you don't want to talk about because sometimes I know that a lot of people they go through stuff because of their family and because of their home life, like mm. things like domestic abuse or even just down to your, your mum, like fuming at you because you're not working or you, you can't be bothered to go to college and she's fuming at you and you're just like, oh, I can't can't do this yeah. and sometimes parents don't understand so to be able to speak to another like mother figure will, is, is a good thing yeah make just make sure that the only advice i'd say is like sometimes you think people aren't interested in what you've got to say or like oh well that person's like that person's going through suicidal thoughts and stuff like that i'm only I, I'm just struggling to get up to bed sometimes, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all mental health is, of all, like, it, everything, mental health is everything. It's like down, down to dyslexia, all yeah. the way up to, like, schizophrenia and stuff. Yeah. And people don't actually realise how, like, like it, little things can cause things to, like, spiral yeah. out of control and stuff. So if you're not talking to somebody while you're going through that, in t five, five years time, what, what your mental health is just going to deteriorate. You keep bottling it up and telling yourself that you're wrong for feeling like that. Yeah. But really, you just need to find like somebody to relate to and some yeah. and have a music about mental health and literally like trying to get that message across is really important. I think. Yeah, I believe there's always someone to talk to as well. You don't have to be family. You could yeah. be someone you don't even know. But as long as there's someone there to speak to, and you can speak about, tell them how you feel, and it's hard life, but it is hard, and we're we're lucky nowadays, really, as well, because say like twenty years ago, thirty years ago, like it what mental health wasn't seen as like a big like it wasn't that important you'd be fit you'd be like focusing on your physical health if anything yeah. and i was taught when i had livy k here i was in when i was interviewing her we mentioned about um about how like you you think like i don't know how to explain it but when like I forgot what I was talking about. You think that no one's there to care for you? Yeah. You want to speak about that? Well, you think that no one's... It's not about thinking there's no way that no one to care for you. It's about how, like, how they're going to view that and they're going to... Like, nowadays it's just... It's seen as more of, like, a normality to be able to talk about your feelings and to be able to be understood mm -hmm. by people. Yeah. It's more of a more normality than a while ago yeah. when you think about it. I think it's a lot, social media is hard in a way but I think it's a lot easier now because you can speak to someone on social media, you don't have to go out and like express your feelings but you could find someone that you'd never meet 
but you can speak to them over social media. Exactly, and it um, yeah, doesn't yeah. really matter what they think of you if uh, you're not yeah. never going to meet them. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think <coughs> technology and like social media nowadays, it can either it can like it, it can have a bad effect on your mental health, it can also have a good effect because if you're posting a picture, you get more comments, you look gorgeous, you look stunning, and all that. Then you got people, oh my god, did you see that picture that she posted? She looks terrible. Yeah, you definitely. know, all yeah. that. It's like, it's just opinions, and it's just like if people like voicing their, their opinions. And if if you, like, that can be quite hard to handle sometimes, like having the honest truth. But, like, there's all that, like, cyberbullying and stuff, yeah. isn't yeah. there, nowadays? And that can have, like, a really bad effect on people. I know that mm-hmm. there's been, like, the suicide, I don't know exactly, but the suicide rate from cyberbullying is like really high. Mm-hmm. And it's just mad to think how this, like, s- cyberbullying is literally like, it's like, it's like modern day bullying. Like, that's what bullying is nowadays, really. It's like f- most of, yeah. most of bullying cases and stuff, it's like through the internet, through like messaging platforms or like, just ghost like ghost comments online and stuff and mm-hmm. it can really like mess with your head because like that's out there for everyone to see yeah and it's just it's it's pretty sad how people react to it really because it's like it's a new thing isn't it yeah technology and stuff yeah, definitely. it's just like and kids are using technology now i think there should be an age limit yeah, the, to the like Facebook and I agree Instagram. With, yeah. Well, there is, but the all kids lie about the ages now because there's no like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's like um, I think I think on Instagram, or I know on Facebook, like you have to be over over a certain age to use Facebook. Yeah. But I set up Facebook when I was like ten, like eleven. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was I was young, and it's the same. Like my my little cousin, she's like my my little cousin and my two little sisters. They're growing up in this like world that's literally based on on technology and it's literally social media. So when when they're like compa- growing up, comparing themselves at such a young age to other people and the people that are better than them, older than them. So they're comparing themselves to people who are like 10, 15 years older than them. Yeah. And you haven't even grown up, your, your mental state is still a, you're still a child. You shouldn't, it, it, in like say 50 years ago, you had that, as a parent, you had that like control over what your child's seeing, where like where your child's going, what's list, what your child's listening to. Yeah. Because of this technology thing, you can't do that. You can't control what your child's listening to. When you get, oh, mum, I want a phone, all my mates have got phones. Do you know what I mean? That's literally the cut off point to controlling your child. When yeah. it gets access to the internet, and I think that's a really big thing. Like it has a really a big part in every child's upbringing nowadays. Yeah. And like when there's that much negativity and hatred on it, and it's like a totally different world that we're finding out about. And that's why I think like me- mental health is deteriorated. On, on a whole, throughout like the whole world, yeah. it's getting worse and worse all the time. It's pretty sad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, do you want to tell me about anything that you've got coming up? Have we talked about that already? Um. We talked about the songs, the two songs that you've got coming up. You haven't told me anything like. Yeah. I've got, well, they're off going to be off a project, so it's going to be like a five song project. Yeah. Um, dropping early next year. But I've only recorded them two for now. So, yeah, I've got the single with Cash Ball and Notes coming, which mm-hmm. I think is going to be massive. That's a, on Big Condo. Brilliant. Um, I've signed a producing deal with Big Condo, so hopefully That's more comes out of that. Um, That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I just want to like, t- sh- I want to talk about like mental health a bit more, but like in the music industry, do you know what I mean? Like how people are raising awareness about 
about that specifically in the music industry because you've got like um um what was that thing that came out a few years ago? Oh, I can't remember, but it's like um nowadays it's like more and more people are like you like as I said before, normalising the fact that people are struggling with like mental health. Yeah. But it's more about like fan Yeah, it's like um, there's not much coming out about mental health musically, and I think there should be more, especially in the in the rap scene. Yeah, in the not it many people are like talking about it. There's the odd few songs about it. Yeah, because in the rap scene, it's kind of like the rap scene is very like masculine, masculine as you know what I mean. And yeah. if you're dealing with mental health, you like. Someone was here the other day called Sean the Dell, and he's like part of um, a, a group that is called Mental Mindset, I think. Was that what it was called? The, that Sean the Dell was with, Mental Mindset, yeah. Um, he, he's got like, he, he's part of an organisation that's there to help people, and he was talking about how um, he went through a lot of mental health problems because of his child and. He, like he had to, he, he really struggled with like that, like fa fatherhood and stuff. Yeah. And um, what in where they tell him to like, man up and stuff like that and be a man. And but dealing with mental health isn't like a female thing. It's not a feminine thing. It's no, like definitely. it's what everyone goes through. Yeah. And the as the rap, because the rap scene. I, in fact, you know what. Recently, there's been more and more female artists in like the rap scene. It's getting quite big for women. Yeah. But like, even then, like the whole kind of gangster like rap yeah. lifestyle and stuff, it's not. It's not like it. There's a stigma attached to yeah. mental health, and the whole awareness thing. It's not even awareness. It's destigmatizing mental health and mm. like. I think people are scared to, to um, as you're saying, I think people don't want to speak about mental health because mm. they feel like they feel like it, it will affect the way they look. But it's not like, I don't think it's a, it's a thing to be, no one would judge anyone, or no one should judge anyone if they've been through like depression or post-traumatic stress disorder or the other types mm. of mental health. That's, I just think not many people speak about it and a lot a lot of people have been through it who you wouldn't yeah. think have gone through it. Exactly. It and exactly. And because of that stigmatization, them keeping it to themselves, as we were saying before, you bottle it up, it's just gonna it's gonna get worse and worse as time goes by. Mm. And right now I think like male suicide rates are like they at their highest because mm. Obviously, men don't feel like they've got anywhere to to go or anyone to talk to, or they feel like they're gonna get judged because of it, yeah. and like that's really sad to think about because, like, it is it is like a big problem, yeah. especially for for. I mean, when you think about it, us girls, we always go, "Oh, men are trash, men are this, men are that." But when you think about it, like most of my m most of my mates. A boys like I've got a lot of boys. I get on with boys a yeah. lot, and yeah. my my friend come spoke to me the other day. He was like, "Rosie, I'm just so stressed out. I just can't. I can't sleep and I can't do this." But and I said, "Well, why don't you go and speak to someone about it?" He goes, "Nah, nah, nah, nah. I'm not speaking. I'm not going to do that. I don't need to do that because yeah. you feel like you, you as as males they feel like they're stable and they're fine and they're supposed. To, well, not that they are, but it's like." Yeah, you've got to be stable as a man to be able to provi provide for your family and stuff. Yeah. But, like, really, they need just as much support as yeah, females do. Definitely. It is on a high male suicide, and it's because of that. Mm. They just feel like because they're a man that they, they can't speak to people. Like, you can speak to. I have to speak to people. <coughs> You've got to. I have to. I have depression. Um, 
It's a lot at first, but as soon as you speak to someone and they, they actually will take it in, like some people will laugh it off, like you're not depressed. You exactly. can't be depressed. But as soon as someone takes it in and they, they will listen to you, you will know that. People will, li will listen to you and. Because, you know, you know, when you say, oh, I've, um, something's happened. Yeah. Uh, or I'm really stressed, I'm just going through something at the moment. How common is it that people go, oh, I'm here to talk, you can talk to me whenever you want. But, like, there's, there's talking about something, and then there's, like, like, letting things out. So you've got, like, if you're talking to someone about it, it's like coming to terms with something. Yeah. It's like figuring out why you're feeling like that, finding the root of the problem and finding a solution. But then there is like just venting and you having to just let everything out and you're just, just yeah. like I and I think I think both are really beneficial yeah. to getting better and stuff. Yeah. And um like I find with like especially because like I, I feel like because I was born in two thousand and two, yeah. Yeah. And this like this the generation like that's just starting out now, you know, the kids that are like two, three and four, they're gonna be growing up in like that just like that te technology environment and I think now to to be able to move forward is the the only way we can move forward is like by teaching those kids and advising those kids how to use technology and social media in a safe way and so it's yeah. not resulting in all yeah. like in social like, media is a a bad place but it's also a good place there's pages out there watch um there's a page on facebook called mental health awareness yeah and it's all people who suffer with mental health and it's people who who can relate to you with being through the same things and there's always someone to talk to, mm. always, and there's always people who will try and put you down. I know. Mm. It's like, the, it's it's equal really in the, in the world, like the amount of people that are going to try and bring you down, the amount of people that are going to try and bring you up, and mm. it just depends on like what you've been through, because you, if you're trying to bring someone else down, you're trying to bully someone else, you're trying to ruin someone else's life, it's obviously because you've got issues, Yeah. and like, it's... It's sad to see like people taking things out on other people. Like, mm. it's not. Even the smallest things can affect someone in a big way, which people don't realize. Like, calling people one name as a joke, they can go on and take that in. Um, take it to heart. Yeah. And it plays on your mind. Like things like that play on your mind, especially if you're like. Like that that thing where the kids are young and the kids are impressionable. You shouldn't be hearing those negative comments growing up in the household. Say if you had no technology, you just yeah. had TV. Like that's it. Like if you're you're growing up like that, you haven't got that negativity around you. But once you once you are connected to the internet, you like yeah, not connected to the internet. But if you're like connected to a really really wide group of people who yeah. can either bring you down or want to bring you up and to be fair a lot of the time they're yeah. and like as as a child growing up you're gonna like children and ki kids who've got phones and they're seven years old like iphones mm -hmm. seven year old kids with an iphone and that's that's not like this day and age 20 years time like it's just crazy to think about because I'm sure 20 years ago you didn't think that a seven year old was going to have a big, like a smartphone. That, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just crazy the way it, like things have changed and it shows in the statistics of how many people are suffering with depression, anxiety, borderline personality disorder, PTSD as you've said and like bipolar and even down to like, like being on the spectrum with Asperger's and autism and ADHD and stuff like that yeah. because like there's a lot more recognition to mental health nowadays but there's a lot more risk of having like a bad mental health yeah there's a, there, a lot more the risk factor is a lot higher than it used to be yeah. and 
the only way that we can move forward is by bringing that positive message to technology and music and like everything. Yeah. So we're gonna have to finish up now, please. Yeah, okay. But it's been lovely and thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks a lot. This has been Big Condor Online and sorry, Condor Online and Anne Rosie and this is Big Boy. Thanks for listening. Nice one. See you soon. <laughs>